Hey, hello everyone. This is Manav from Civil Center, and I welcome all of you back to our channel and our lecture series on structural engineering. So, friends, uh, in Civil Center YouTube channel, we upload regularly videos related to civil engineering concepts and softwares. So now we have decided that we will uh, make a series on structural engineering uh, in which we'll discuss the concepts of structural engineering one by one and uh, so that all of you can benefit from it. And uh, before starting the video, we are also having a special workshop on preparation of structural drawing, which is going to start from tomorrow. And uh, this is a five days workshop and uh, this workshop is placed at a price, minimal price of rupees 499. So if you want, you can attend that using the first link which has been given in the description. Okay, so once this is done, now you have seen many many videos on this Tecla Structural Designer and uh, Stat Pro, ETAPS, or how to make the structural drawing uh, in our channel also. So, how to make the structural design? So, what are the basic aspects here? So, today we'll discuss about loads. What are the types of loads? How loads act? And what are the standard codes? and common provisions which are adopted for it. So first of all, to start with, if we consider the direction. Now, direction wise, there can be, we all know about horizontal load, which can be classified as our wind load and earthquake loads and the vertical loads, dead load and the line load. So, so now it's important to know the codes about it as well code for your dead load. If we go by the Indian standards, IS 875 part one, code for the imposed load, IS 875 part two, and code for the wind load, it is IS 875 part three, and code for the seismic or the earthquake load is IS 1893. So these are the codes which we need to remember and which you might you know face in any interviews. So, uh, basic question you, you might have been asked in interview, you should know that. And now what is, there is also a different kind of load, which is not used in the buildings. That particular load is called the longitudinal load. So these are the tractive and braking forces and these are considered often in the case of design of bridges and design of gantry cars. So now we'll discuss about this vertical and horizontal loads and not about this longitudinal loads because these are the most common things and basically first if we start with we should know about these things so now let's see, discuss about dead load consider a building in front of your eyes what is the dead load in the building firstly first answer which all of you will give is the self weight of all the members so now how can we calculate the self weight it's pretty simple to calculate the self weight of any particular member of a building, we just need to multiply the volume into its unit weight. And where will you find the unit weight? In IS 1893 part 1, there is a table in which we'll find out the unit weight of all the particular members. So this is the IS 1875 part 1, which is the Indian codes for our dead loads and the arrangement Okay, if you just know of one particular code, the other codes, VS codes and the Euro codes also, the arrangement and the concepts basically will be pretty much the same. The standards can be different. So here in the table number one of your 875 part one, you have the unit weights of all the materials you want to test out. So let's find out, let's say the unit weight of concrete, unit weight of RCC, unit weight of bricks, everything you'll find here and you just need to multiply as you can see the common bond clay bricks the unit weight is this one and then you can find this uh, you see here uh, cement plain concrete as you can see cement uh, cement concrete uh, we have this unit weights and now if you go this one we need this cement reinforced concrete is one percent steel it lies between 22 to 24.2 with five percent steel is this much so cement mortar is 20.4 which you usually take 20 in uh, kilonewton per meter cube, meter cube in our textbooks so all these things comes from here this is it should be part one you can get the unit weight and then we can multiply it and find out the dead weight so if a met some material is present the unit weight of which is not mentioned in the is code like the that of double sc bricks so that you can just google and you can just uh, you know uh, 
you confirm from the material uh, supply plant and then you can calculate the particular unit weight so that's very simple here so uh, the next thing which we are going to discuss here we are going to discuss about the life load so before discussing about life load this is our overall loads which you are going to discuss it is our date which you have discussed right now and now we are going to discuss about live load in the case of or vertical loads so the code for the live load is your is 875 part 2 so before going into the live load we'll complete the more aspects of the dead load so first of all you consider the dead load that is the self weight of the structure which comes into the dead load so now when we are making a structural model now we'll discuss like when we are making a building model we give certain loads on the beams why is that particular thing done so that particular thing is done on the beams two types of loads are acting firstly that is the load of the slab and secondly the load of the walls above them i'm talking about a normal slab not a flat slab that's a different topic so in a normal slab a normal rcc slab the two loads are acting so the slab if we're modeling in the particular software like the, in the case of tecla we can provide the slab so then we don't need to provide the self weight on the beams because the software will take automatically when you are doing the structural analysis but when we are taking the wall load the wall is a member which we can't model in the structural uh, analysis software so the wall we have to wall load we have to calculate and provide there so that's what we are providing like external wall load internal wall load we're providing on the particular beams as a udl whether it be in stad whether it be in tecla whether it be etf you are providing that so that's the concept of the dead load and now if instead some people do not provide the slab especially those who are designing by indian load indian ports and uh, they are providing the unit weight of the slabs in the uh, or the load of their calculating the load of the slab and providing it as a you know in the kilonewton per meter square they are providing it on the places where we have the slab so that also we can do it depends so now we'll discuss about the live load so what is live load and what is the difference between dead load and live load many people confuse this term so i am going to take the help of the is code to stop this debate forever and clear all of your concepts so is code for your live load is 875 part 2 and in this with the help of this is code we will just see what is our dead load sorry live load and we are going to learn the definition and what it means so in cost point one find out the definition you can read it out but i'm i'm going to tell you this definition in very simple term basically the weight of all the movable parts is included in the live load uh, in live load that is the uh, particular uh, your it may be movable parts maybe your furniture any type of furniture and it also depends on the usage of the building so why let's give a small example suppose you have a you have a residential building in which you are staying so the maximum number of people which can come in your house is 10 12 or maximum 15 but if you are using uh, that particular space suppose say 1500 square feet for a cafeteria then the number of people will increase it can be 50 60 70 80 depending upon your particular uh, that particular commercial value so like this with the increase or with the change in the purpose of use or of usage of the building the load changes so now how can you find out how much import load to apply in schools how much import load to apply in flats how much import load should we apply for cafe or library how can you find that what is the particular clause for that so for that all the answers will be given in is 875 part 1 but if you before going into the is 875 part 2 table number 1 sorry uh, you can know a particular thing that weight of all movable parts are included included in the imposed load that into the furniture and weight of any permanent parts it may be your float tiles also they can be included in the dead loads so in the 875 part 1 you can find out for normal dwellings which you most use live load of 2 kN per meter cube meter square has been given which is the minimum load in the imposed load by the way and 
uh, in dwellings, uh, in accordance to this, you can also have this 1.5 also in some cases. And after, uh, if you suppose we go for the cafeteria, suppose you can, uh, so the broiler rooms, you have live load of four kiloton per meter cube. Kitchens uh, in the institutional buildings, you have this uh, a kitchen uh, live load of three kiloton per meter cube. So if, and if you also want to know what is institutional buildings, what is residential buildings, what is assembly buildings, for that also the code has given you the answer. So that particular thing you can know in the beginning. So this, in the, in this is the terminology and this question can also be asked in the interviews that what is the, what are the types of the building according to the IS 875 part two, because IS 875 part two classifies the buildings based on the occupancy or use group, because that's what, what that's what the live load or the imposed load depends upon the occupancy. That is the people, kitne log reh rahe hai wahan pe, kis, kis purpose se use ho hai. occupancy or use group for well, according to that, this particular code is used. So the principle as per the principle occupancy of the building, we have classified the buildings into assembly buildings, business buildings. And if you want to know what is assembly buildings, just go to the examples in this, you'll know, suppose the essential buildings are public transportation services, recreation services, gymnasium, gyms, museums, business buildings are your, uh, you know, as you can see, courthouses, libraries, banks. So if you just read out these examples, you can find out that there are eight types of buildings based on the occupancy or use groups. And this is also a common question which is asked in interviews. So you can uh, you can make sure that you remember that as well. So after this, we are going to discuss the remaining concept in a very simple way. So we're not going to discuss about this impact load, but you should know about impact load. How is how it is it different from the life? So basically, uh, if people move or people work, then it produces impact load. If soldiers march then it produce impact load. People moving light load, soldiers marching in a specific rhythm produces the impact load. The load on the, on, on the beams of the particular lift can produce the impact load. So how this impact load is considered? For the impact load, we just, we just multiply the live load by a specific multiplier or percentage. So that value we can find out according to code that we are not going to discuss now. We just want to discuss the basic, but you know at least now that is also an impact load, which is given by a live load multiplier. Okay. So now let's go to the horizontal load, earthquake and wind load. So in this earthquake load and our wind load, we'll discuss some things. So basically wind load depends upon what is the area of the building, which is exposed to the wind surface. And where to go in which building we should consider the wind load and which building we should not consider the wind load. This we will also discuss now. Generally, building consultants for buildings of four to five story, that is G plus three or G plus four, they do not consider the wind loads because otherwise the building becomes a bit uneconomical for normal buildings. And in some codes, foreign codes also support that. But in IS, uh, you know, 875 part three, it is written that for buildings, you know, less than 10 meters, we do not need to consider the wind load for buildings above 10 meters. We can consider the wind load. This is as per IS 875 part three, but generally what consultants practice is that up to G plus three or G plus four, they do not provide the wind loads. But if you go up as per the IS 875 part three, specifically, if you have an average flow to flow height of three, three uh, meters, that is three meters approximately to 10 feet, then up to G plus two ground floor plus two floor above. And in the US, they say first floor plus two floor above because the convention is different. So if we have three, uh, three stories or G plus two, then we don't need to consider wind load as per the 875 part three. So above the, those buildings, we need to consider the wind loads. The wind loads can be defined as the loads which are Cause due to the horizontal movement of wind. And basically they have a basic wind speed, which is mentioned in the 875 part three or the other quotes, country quotes, which you will see. And it is multiplied by some factors or modification factors, K1, K2, K3, K4. So that's how we calculate the wind load. 
in any software if you are for designing the wind load like a stat or a tecla then we need to define the zone of that particular uh, or the basic wind speed of that particular zone and then basically we can design it so let's come to the next loading which is the seismic load so for the seismic load also this is the same concept which is applied that uh, for normal uh, buildings of you know some 3 to 4 stories it is not considered but what is the exact is uh, you know consideration you will have in is 13920 so is 13920 states that for zone 2 to zone 3 for up to zone 3 and for buildings up to 5 stories that is g plus 4 for zone 2 and zone 3 earthquake zone and for buildings up to 5 stories or g plus 4 the earthquake load is not critical means is 13920 is saying that for up to zone 3 even if you don't consider the earthquake loads for uh, you know uh, this uh, non uh, buildings which are lying in the zone 2 and zone 2 or zone 3 then you would be good because that the uh, monolithic construction which you do that should be enough to take all the loads which may come anywhere due to the earthquake load so it doesn't mean that structure will be like uh, unsafe because anyway you are considering the dead loads live loads and the load combinations in those stories so if you go by is 13920 we don't need to consider earthquake load up to zone 3 but if you are zone 4 or zone 5 definitely we need to consider earthquake load for every building regardless of the number of stories so the zone or the seismic zone you will find in in the code of is 1893 we'll find a map and also in the appendix there is a table where we'll find the zone of the city in which you are going to design the building so this is all about this particular basic loading process process and if you find this video interesting make sure you like this video because it helps us to reach more people and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet make sure you subscribe to our channel because there you will find a lot of videos on civil engineering concepts and software and if you want to learn how to make a structural drawing you can join me in the workshop which we'll do from you know saturday to wednesday that is five day workshop this weekend from 7 to 8 pm and we have kept it at a minimal price so that everyone can attend at rupees 499 the link which will be you'll find it out in the description Just check out it, it it's in the second uh, in top three lines will first three lines will find the link and you can join that particular workshop thanks for watching keep learning stay safe and bye bye